right, now that is a solid looking watch. Kind of chunky. Hey guys, this is Dave. Welcome back to Just The Watch. And today I'm gonna to be giving you another unboxing plus review, this time of the Pacific Blue from Audaz. So in this video, I will be unboxing the watch and giving you my initial impressions. I'll be sizing it. I'll test it out for a couple of days. And at the end, I'll come back and give you my final conclusions on the watch. All right, I've had the Audaz Pacific Blue on my wrist for a few days now, and I'm ready to give you guys my final conclusions on it. This is a really solidly built watch. Um, the Tritium is super cool, but there's a few design cues I wish they would work on a little bit. So we'll kind of go through the process of getting to know this watch together, and at the end of it, hopefully we'll come to some idea of whether this is something you might be interested in purchasing yourself. Now this is my first time reviewing a watch from Audaz. Um, they sent over the Pacific Blue is kind of a cushion cased dive watch uh, that is fairly uh, large size, very substantial looking, and it features tritium on the, uh, on the hands and on the dial. So I don't get a lot of tritium watches my way. I'm kind of curious to see how the after dark performance works. So that'll definitely be a big focus of the testing part of this review. Now I've seen a lot of reviews from other watches from Audaz, kind of been keeping my eye on them for a while now. They focus on what they consider to be professional dive watches, so watches with high water resistance built to a high standard. And they do have kind of their own look. They don't do so many homages. Uh, they definitely have a little bit of their own flair to them that kind of seems to be evolving as they go. So I'm definitely curious to take a look at this new offering from them. Anyways, let's get into the unboxing and see what they sent over. Now you may have noticed the paid promotions flag at the beginning of this video. Uh, that's because this watch was given to me by Audaz. However, other than the watch itself, I didn't receive any compensation for this review, and Audaz did not have any input into the content of this review. Comes in a nice uh, travel style case, feels very solid there. Inside we have the watch. Okay, so reading the spec sheet, this has a Seiko NH35 movement inside. It's got a sapphire crystal ceramic bezel insert solid link bracelet, tritium loom, and this is all selling for $550 on their website. However, they gave me a 30% off discount code. So I think that knocks us down to under $400 with that code. So yeah, 550 is, you know, going a little pricey for a Seiko NH35 watch, but you know, when you knock it down with that discount code, it gets to a much more reasonable level. Uh, let's get all this packaging off first. That is a really cool case back. Super detailed relief of like a submarine and a fish of some kind. Fishermen out there, let me know what kind of fish this is. <laughs> it's got to be one of the coolest case backs I've seen. All right, let's start with the dimensions and specifications and see what we got here. Okay, so I'm getting about 42 millimeters across just a hair over 45 millimeters lug to lug, so really compact lug to lug. Okay, and that looks like it's about 16 and a half millimeters tall, so pretty chunky watch there. And that sapphire crystal looks completely flat, so that's without a domed sapphire crystal. Then you're getting 22 millimeter lugs, so that'll give you a lot of strap options as well. As mentioned before, sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel, Seiko NH35 inside. And this one comes with 200 meters of water resistance. But let's zoom in on the dial for a second here. So those markers and hands, you can see those little tubes on there, those are tritium T25 tubes. So if you guys aren't familiar with tritium, I've done a video kind of breaking that down. I'll link that before above. So the bezel has your traditional loom, you know, the kind of stuff that you charge it up with light and then you go in the dark and it glows for a while and then you need to charge it again. Uh, tritium tubes are a different kind of illumination. Basically, they're super tiny glass vials that are filled with a radioactive gas. And then the inside of those bottles is coated with a phosphorescent material that reacts when the radiation hits it and lights up. The result is a constant form of illumination. So those tritium tubes are glowing right now. Uh, they glow fairly faintly, but they glow constantly. They don't need to be charged. And yeah, so that's the main benefit of them. 
This one has a really cool blue and yellow color scheme with that yellow second hand. I like that. Um, overall, really clean design, very legible. Those tritium tubes kind of look uh, neat sitting on the dial like that. The crown is a good size. It's signed and it's got this kind of, looks like a PVD coating around the edge of it. Give you a little cool look there. This is a screw down crown, which is what you would expect. You get hand winding, hacking, and a quick set date, which I probably should have checked the time before doing that. Yep, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, crown operation and everything feels very smooth on the watch. Checking the bezel action now. And it feels pretty good. You know, the edge here feels a little bit slippery. So I would have liked to see something a little bit more aggressive so you get better grip on. But it's not too bad. The action is not really heavy, so it's not too hard to spin. But definitely solid. Just a tiny hint of back play, but not much. Now, bezel alignment is always tough to check on camera because of the angles. But to me, that looks maybe just a smidge to the left. But pretty close. Checking out the finishing of the watch. Okay, checking out the finishing on the case. You get polished sides here, and then some brushwork on the top. Pretty nice transition between the two. Case is a cushion style case. So be curious to see how that wears on the wrist. Yeah, the big measurement for me is that thickness. That's a very thick watch. I'm usually not a fan of watches that are overly thick, but we'll see how this one wears for me. Now the bracelet is very nice. Really solid feeling. Polished uh, mid-links, kind of H-link style bracelet. Uh, the H's are brushed, and then the in-betweens are polished. Then you get polished along the edges, so that matches the polishing on the edge of the case, so nice. Uh, cohesiveness to the design there. I believe these are push pins. I'm not sure if they're a pin and collar system or just standard push pins, but we'll see that when we size it. Clasp feels very substantial and solid. Nice milled clasp. Getting four micro adjust, which is great. Um, one of the things that I always hate to see is a watch with only a couple of micro adjusts. Four is, I think, just the minimum amount of number I'd like to see. Clasp is dual security. So you flip this up and then just pull this out. And yeah, it feels pretty good. Right amount of resistances and things. Pretty satisfying signed clasp as well. All right, let's go ahead and get this sized up for my wrist and we'll see how it wears. Okay, there it is sized up on my seven and a half inch wrist and I wound up having to take out two links for this and it's got four micro adjusts I got it right in the middle I had to adjust a little bit there but got a pretty good fit there on the wrist now as you can see that is a fairly thick watch It's also winter here, so I'll be wearing a, long, a lot of long sleeves. We'll see how it goes. But it feels like it sits pretty well. It's pretty well balanced with the bracelet, and the bracelet is a yeah, very high quality bracelet. It does use the pin and collar system, so I've never had any problems with that. I use the hammer to get the pins out, and it comes out fine, and I've heard that that's a lot more secure than just the standard push pins. But I know some people aren't a big fan of the pin and collar system. So it's definitely a very solid 
feeling watch. And I think with a watch of this size, that's kind of what they're going for. This is a large watch. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing that I would feel very confident taking it into the water if I was doing any sort of water sports activity. Everything feels very solid and well built. But uh, let's go ahead and hit the lights and see if we can check out the loom here and that tritium and see how it looks. Okay, so here you can kind of see the tritium there glowing. And yeah, tritium is a little bit harder to film because it is not terribly impressive uh, compared to some of the more high performance loom like Superluminova C3 or even BGW9. However, the trick is that the tritium is always going to glow you know, at the same brightness, so it's not going to get any dimmer. And you, know, you can't see it too well on the camera. I'll try and get some better shots of it. You know, maybe do some time lapse or things so you can get a better feel for how it will look in real life. Um, but to my eye, it is clearly visible, even in this lighting. So it is, yeah, it's, it's enough loom to be useful in the dark. Uh, but let me show you the contrast here for a second. So I, I haven't uh, hit this with a black light yet. And when I do, you see this is a fully loom bezel, which I'm assuming the bezel is Superluminova C3. So after I charge that up, it's going to be much brighter than the tritium. So there's the thing. So the bezel, you know, if it's fully charged, is going to be much brighter than the tritium. You know, again, I'm going to guess for probably about a half an hour or so here before it fades to the point where the tritium becomes brighter. At least that's been the case in other tests that I've run. So that's the trade-off that you make with tritium. You can have a constant light source that's basically always going to be like this, you know, five, six, seven hours into the night or whatever, it's going to be glowing just as brightly as it is right now, whereas standard loom will have often faded completely to black by then. But initially, it's not nearly as bright as, you know, your standard loom formulas. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and test this for a couple days. I'll test the After Dark performance and see how it works in practical usage. Try the watch on the wrist and see how it feels and let you know what I find out. So one thing I have noticed about this watch is the uh, the height. So it is 16 millimeters tall, which is fairly tall on the wrist, but it actually wears pretty well. It's really comfortable. And I think that uh, says a lot about the case design on this watch. So you can see the watch has a really nice curvature to the case, which helps it conform really well. So I think the 16 millimeter height here is less of an issue than it normally would be for me. I also really appreciate the case finishing. I've really been enjoying that. Um, really nice case design overall. So I think that's one of the things that's kind of impressed me so far. Uh, testing this watch out. Okay, I've had the Audaz Pacific Blue on my wrist for a few days now, and this is a really solidly built watch, and the tritium is super cool. Um, however, I think there are also a couple of design cues I wish they would work on a bit. So let's talk through those three issues in kind of that order. Substantial, I think, is one of the best words to describe this watch. And that's largely a positive thing. Um, it can be a negative for some people if that's not what you're looking for. Uh, but this watch is very solidly built. It is a very uh, kind of sturdy feeling watch and with that a very heavy watch. Um, this is one of the heaviest watches that I've worn and it is fairly tall at 16 millimeters. Probably needlessly so. This is a 200 meter dive watch with a Seiko NH35 inside of it so it doesn't need to be that tall. They've, they've done it because they want to make a, a big watch with a lot of wrist presence. And the height of that case and the design that went along with it is one of the most noticeable uh, features of the watch. So if you like a watch with a lot of wrist presence and don't mind having something a little bit thicker than usual, uh, this isn't going to be a problem for you. Now the good news is, is this watch is still really comfortable on the wrist. They seem to have balanced it pretty well with the bracelet and so I didn't ever feel like it was unwieldy or anything like that. Overall, the components and the build quality of the watch is very solid and I definitely appreciate that aspect of it. And the bracelet in particular feels very high quality and just has a really beautiful finish and brushing on it. And the case as well. The, the finish work on the case I think is really cool. They have this sort of uh, black PVD crown that also adds a nice little visual flourish as well. So good work there. Second, um, you know, I, I don't get a lot of tritium watches in and so it's always kind of a treat when I get to wear one for a few days and I'm always reminded at how awesome tritium really is compared to regular loom. Basically for everyday use, in my opinion, tritium pretty much 
outperform standard Lume across the board. Now, if you get a watch that has really good Super Luminova, and then if you shine a flashlight on it really bright, um, that watch is going to outperform the Tritium for maybe a half an hour before that fades to the point that the Tritium is going to take over and, and become the top dog. But in most real world situations, if you're just wearing the watch, you know, you're not sitting there shining a flashlight on it. And in that case, the, the tritium is probably going to start out as bright as, you know, most dive watches are going to of just, you know, walking from a bright room into a dark room. But then the regular dive watches are immediately going to uh, start fading and the tritium is just going to keep going. I found that in real life usage, the tritium was perfectly visible in the dark. It's not super bright. It's not like you know, it's not like a Seiko watch that's had a, a black light shined on it. Uh, it's like a Seiko watch that had the black light shined on it half an hour ago. Which is to say, still very legible in the dark. So really cool, really practical feature in here. Um, just to note, the only downside to Tritium is that it does eventually fade out. Um, I believe it has a half-life of 12 years, if I remember correctly. So that means it's going to be half as bright in 12 years, a quarter as bright in like 24 years. Now let's talk about those design elements that I kind of ran across, and there's a couple of them. So this is a dive watch, and Audaz really kind of bills themselves as a company that makes professional dive watches. They make very solidly built watches with high water resistance. Um, the challenges that I've had with it come with the dial and the handset that they've used. Uh, number one, uh, the second hand does not have any loom on it which you know, for most everyday purposes is not going to be an issue. However, if you are familiar with dive watch standards, a dive watch is supposed to have a loom second hand so that you can tell that the watch is running in the dark. Without a loom second hand, once it goes dark, it's difficult to know whether the watch is still ticking or not. And in a diving situation, if you're relying on the watch to tell you the time, um, you need to know that it's working. Second thing is that this watch features almost identical baton markers at all of the 12 indices. The 12 o'clock index is not really distinguished from any of the other ones, which is another thing that dive watches typically have. They typically have a, a large 12 o'clock index so that you can easily orient the watch, particularly in the dark. In this case, especially in the dark, since all of the watches, since all of the indexes feature the exact same tritium tube, the same color, um, they all look identical and it can be a little bit disorienting or confusing sometimes uh, to tell what time it is particularly if you don't have the watch on your wrist. You know, if you pick it up, if you've set it on your nightstand or something and pick it up in the middle of the night, you're gonna have a really hard time figuring out, you know, where's up and where's down on this thing. And then the third issue is just that I think that the, that the dial and the handset um, come across as a little bit sterile and plain. The yellow second hand is a nice touch. And again, I feel like they did a good job on the case and on the bracelet, uh, but the dial just kind of feels a little bit plain to me. Their logo in just kind of a simple all caps serif text um, also doesn't really do a lot to distinguish the watch from, you know, other watch brands out there. Now, wrapping all that up, let's talk about the price a little bit. Um, this one they have listed on their website for $550. Now, even though it has Tritium, um, $550 for a Seiko NH35 powered watch seems a little bit steep to me. However, um, Audaz is fairly generous with their discount codes. I, I think they give 30% off to first time subscribers to their newsletter. They also gave me a 30% off discount code. Um, so you can drop, you can use that 30% off discount down below. And I think that's going to knock this down to around $389. $389 is a much better price for this watch than $550. So I think at that discounted price, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good price for all that you're getting. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this review. Let me know what you guys think. And if you guys have had any experience with Audaz watches before, um, this is the first one that they sent over to me. Um, so big thanks to them for that. I really enjoyed getting to check it out. If you're interested in this watch, uh, discount code and links are in the description down below. But that'll wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Bye.